Welcome to this video. In our previous video, we have performed a buckle analysis to investigate linear buckling of a cylinder under hydrostatic pressure. Buckling mold shapes and buckling loads were found in the previous video and we also wrote the buckling mode in a file. Using these mold shapes as imperfections, we are going to model the buckling of the cylinder by Rick's step. Because the cylinder has elastoplastic behavior and also nonlinear geometry happens during the analysis, we should use nonlinear buckling analysis to investigate buckling of the cylinder. To perform Rick's analysis, we save as our previous CAE file and apply some changes to this simulation. In property module, we can add any new aspect of the material. We have defined previously the plastic behavior of the material and we even can add damage to the material. We increase the number of integration points across the thickness of the shell. And in a step module, we replace the buckle step by a Rix step. In Rick's step, we turn nonlinear geometry on and we can define some criteria for terminating the job. The first criterion is maximum load proportionality factor and the second can be displacement of a special nodes or points in a specific direction. If we do not set this criterion for ending the job, the job will be continued until the maximum number of increments is exceeded. Then we reduce the initial and minimum size of the arc lengths and go to the load module. In the previous simulation, we applied 1 pascal pressure to the outside surface of the cylinder and we found out that the critical buckling load is more than 1 megapascal. Therefore, we enter 1 MPa as an initial load in this analysis. The remain boundary condition is OK and we go to the job module. We rename the job because we need the ODB file from our previous simulation. The most important thing is to apply buckling modes of previous simulation as imperfections in this simulation. For this purpose, at first, we remove changes that we have done in model keywords in our previous simulation. And now we add some lines before the assembly part of the model. The first line denotes that we are applying imperfection to the model and we enter the name of our previous ODB file and also we enter the number of a step which its results are using as imperfections. In the following lines, we enter the number of each mold shape and a coefficient which will be multiplied by the displacement of these mold shapes. As the second mold shape was similar to the first, we enter the first and third mold shapes here and for this coefficient, we should take it into account that multiplying this coefficient to the displacement of the mode shape should result in a value which is less than a few percent of the thickness of the shell. Usually, for the next mode shape, we use a smaller coefficient. Now we can submit the job. and monitor the progress of the job. We can investigate the load proportionality factor here. It increases even more than 1 and then it decreases. The decrease of load proportionality factor shows the buckling and we can terminate the job and see the results. The final shape of the cylinder is between mode 1 and 3 
and we can plot the load proportionality factor from history output this curve shows that after a sharp increase in the load we have a maximum and then decrease of the load the maximum point shows the critical load for the buckling and we can exactly evaluate this point which shows a pressure with approximately 1.32 megapascal which is close to the first buckling load of the buckle step However, the risk result is more accurate due to considering nonlinear behavior of the structure and the material. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If this video has helped you out, please let us know by a like, a comment or a subscribe. See you in next videos.